Great. So uh, welcome all. Uh, welcome to the Spinnaker India online meetup, uh, me edition. Uh, I am your host, Shalini Sutanj. Uh, I take care of organizing this meetup and lead the community uh, at Optimix. Uh, so this, this uh, community uh, is basically an initiative to bring together uh, the community around CI, CD, DevOps, and specifically Spinnaker onto one platform. And uh, this this time uh, around, uh, we have a, a great speaker. So before I move move on to uh, the agenda today, uh, I just wanna uh, uh, say that I hope all of you have been doing great. Uh, it's been uh, really uh, tough weeks out here in India. Uh, so I hope your loved ones and you uh, uh, you yourself is doing great. Uh, with that, uh, let me just move on to the agenda today. And uh, we have an exciting agenda lined up uh, for today. Uh, we have a really, really great speaker, uh, Vishal Patel. Uh, he uh, is a really senior guy. He's uh, the director of engineering at Optimix uh, with almost uh, 19 plus years of experience in DevOps, continuous delivery, and uh, in the ID world. So uh, he would be taking us through uh, what he calls uh, as mad CD or measure, analyze and decide continuous delivery. So uh, this, this particular session uh, would be uh, typically like we have around 45 to 50 minutes uh, session. Uh, this time around, we are keeping it uh, to only one session uh, just to maintain focus and make it a more, uh, more engaging and focused topic for you uh, guys, as some of you guys have requested this last time. Uh, post that, this session, we would be having a short quiz lined up uh, just to keep things interesting. We do this, this is a regular feature, uh, uh, and we keep this uh, interesting. We want to keep this uh, session very informal and uh, a two-way communication, uh, quite an inter interactive session. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, it would, it's going to be a, a fun quiz, and we have got uh, some uh, Amazon coupons to grab. Uh, this would be, uh, and we would be announcing the winners, of course, uh, right after the, after the quiz. Uh, so before I move on to uh, start on the agenda uh, for the day, uh, I just want to quickly mention a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, keep your, uh, I mean, you are free to uh, ask any questions uh, during you know, the course of the session, but I, I would request all of you to uh, just be uh, patient and use the Q and A tab and submit your questions there so we don't miss out on, on any of your questions uh, today. And uh, before I start, uh, let me just uh, <clears throat> start. We have a short poll as we all uh, do uh, like last time, just to understand a little bit about the audience makeup we have. And uh, just please participate in this poll and let us know um, a little bit about yourself so that uh, our speaker can, uh, based on your responses, can uh, alter his session uh, towards you, and make it more interesting for you. Okay, cool. So um, I see only 60% of the guys have voted. Please uh, vote to this uh, poll, guys. Uh, I'm gonna close this in another five seconds. Okay. And yeah, so I, I see uh, a equal mix of DevOps engineers and engineering managers uh, on the uh, uh, in our audience today. And stop. So I have one more poll before we. Uh, start uh, open it up for the session today. There are a couple of questions here. Uh, if you are you currently doing continuous delivery? If yes, with what percentage of your 
production applications. It, it depends. If you are not doing it, uh, there's an option there. Just uh, feel free to mark that F1 as well. Okay, I see the responses coming in right now. Okay. Great. So there are some uh, folks who are using Spinnaker in production. That's uh, great. Uh, so we have a really relevant audience this time around. I'm going to close the voting in another five seconds and open it up. Okay. So yeah. So uh, we have, uh, okay, so we have less than an equal mix of uh, participants who are using, uh, who are doing continuous delivery, but uh, mostly are not uh, uh, using continuous delivery in their current uh, set of production uh, lineup. And there are some people who are using Spinnaker production. Okay, great. So with this, uh, without other, uh, any further ado, I'll invite Vishal. Uh, so Vishal, uh, please take it away. Um, the, uh, the stage is all yours. Uh, Vishal, you are on mute. Thank you, Shalin. Um, thanks a lot for a warm introduction and, uh, you know, for uh, briefing us all, you know, the rules of the game, you know, I'm talking about the agenda. Um, so, uh, very good evening to uh, all the participants and the attendants, uh, attendees. Um, I'm Vishal, I'm working for OpsMX and, uh, um, you know, uh, almost about 20 years industry experience, you know, um, almost 18 years out of which in uh, um, CI, CD or DevOps, right? It's been a, a quite interesting journey, you know. Uh, Vishal, can you be uh, slightly louder? Uh, your voice is slightly, uh, it would help if you can be just sure. louder. Sure, yeah. sure. I think this is okay, right? Yep. Okay. So uh, it's been an exciting journey and uh, I, I, you know, I can, I can uh, confidently or very proudly say that, you know, I have seen this field of DevOps evolving, you know, right from the days and back in 2001, 2002, you know, when this used to be called software config management, right? Um, there used to be, you know, very few or little mentions about this particular process, you know, when uh, organizations, they used to do a CMM or CMM level I or ISO uh, certifications or assessments, right? Otherwise, you know, uh, those days, there were hardly anyone who would even know about these things, right? And since then, you know, the tremendous evolution that this particular uh, domain has gone through, you know, this is, this is enormous, you know. Software configuration management to today, you know, we call DevOps. And um, really, you know, this is something I can't even think of, you know, as to five years down the line, how this particular domain or this field is going to look like, how this is all going to evolve, and what will be the new face of it, right? So, this is definitely exciting, right? Now, um, let me share my screen and uh, let's get started on the topic. Okay. Um, give me just one minute. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about MAD CD today. You know, um, MAD, um, actually, MAD means, you know, uh, not that literal meaning of that word MAD, but MAD is, uh, you know, here measure, analyze, and decide, you know, and this is something, you know, very exciting. Um, we are talking about CD, and CD here is continuous delivery, you know. 
almost every single organization today you know has been um, you know implementing ci cd in some form or the other and many organizations they want to uh, you know start implementing this journey so they want to begin their journey in this uh, domain and uh, today i think you know almost every one is you know trying to achieve you know uh, some or the other form of ci cd or devops in their organizations and they want to get value uh, gain out of it how mad what is this mad cd about uh, how this is going to help you um, in your current organizations or you know in in implementing devops and ci cd is something that we are going to look into and uh, then you know i can i'm i'm going to talk a little bit about you know our product at opsimex where uh, we have tried to implement this that uh, our customers they start leveraging it right so this will be like you know very short uh, um, you know this was a very short agenda as to you know what i'm going to talk about today um this is a quick introduction about opsimex so uh, Opsimex is a company, um, you know, and I would say, you know, this is one of the uh, leading providers of a CD platform, you know, that helps all the organizations across, right, um, to scale their software delivery process without any human intervention. You know, this is a very big statement that I'm making. So we at Opsimex, you know, strive to ensure our customers they uh, they spend less minimum or almost no uh, human intervention in scaling their continuous delivery or cd uh, implementation you know and uh, this is where you know we we try to ensure that you know our platform that we are delivering enables our customers towards that we have you know uh, since you know uh, we have a quite a good number of investors um i can i can go on and on and keep talking about the different customers we have but probably you know some other time so opsimex we 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 deliver software you know without human intervention so that's the tagline you know and that is what you know I, is what is the most thrilling part of uh, this company probably that's one of the reasons you know we are right uh, proud to be working here okay traditional cd or what we call um, the continuous delivery here right uh, what it looks like let me start with a very simple um, you know uh, explanation about um, what continuous delivery is and uh, uh, you know how continuous delivery is little different than continuous deployment now continuous delivery is definitely you know a part of devops practice right and of course you know um, this implementation of devops ci cd practices processes you know they all help in you know lot of different perspectives to your organization one you know it will definitely you know help you gain control over your software releases it will enable you to make you know shorter release cycles that means you know you can uh, hit market you can make production uh, more frequent right it is a um, you know umbrella within which you make uh, all the different stakeholders uh, of your delivery team you know connect and interact with each other you make their interaction and you know they are working together in a, a much more seamless right um, of course you know all of these things are not just you know some of the benefits each of these benefits they all come with you know some kind of dollar value you know um, savings as well so there are definitely you know lot of such advantages now ci and cd continuous integration continuous delivery a typical cd process would be like you know you 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 plan for it right a software delivery cycle you know how it goes you plan for it you start developing that you build the applications you test them you know again test may go through multiple cycles here right you release it and then you deploy it as simple as that right here um there is a small caveat you know uh, the modern uh, definitions you know the modern um, culture tries to define that you know there is a small um you know manual intervention here between release and deploy and that a uh, small step which if done manually is called continuous delivery but if it is automated then it becomes you know continuous deployment right so that's one very simple and odd definition uh, 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 differentiation between continuous delivery and continuous deployment right um 
I hope I'm clear so far. Okay, thank you. Now, as I was telling you, you know, apart from all the other obvious advantages of CD, continuous delivery, you know, some of the most uh, uh, startling facts, you know, and again, this is something, you know, that comes from uh, uh, Puppet Labs, okay, and they have come up with some numbers based on some surveys that they have done, and these numbers are really overwhelming, and, and they are really startling for any organizations to adopt to continuous delivery practice, you know, and continuous delivery is, again, you know, as I repeat, it's not just about having a version control tool, right, or having a tool for, uh, you know, automating your builds, or it's not just about you know automating your deployments or your application deployments onto the uh, target uh, environments, right? It's not just about that. It is about having that seamless process, you know, the one which we were talking in the earlier slide, where all these teams they collaborate with each other, and this collaboration, cooperation, and working of these teams together enable your software, you know, delivery faster with more quality, with lesser time to you know uh, delivery. Right, and this all you know gives some kind of dollar advantage, and this is what it is. Nineteen percent increase in revenue, right? Now you read it as nineteen percent increase in revenue, or you know nineteen percent profit, right? It is as simple as that. So your ROI is, in, I mean, you are having nineteen percent profit margins, you know, in your delivery segment if you start implementing CD. 50% lesser failures. This is one amazing number, you know, which has actually, uh, you know, uh, opened the eyes, you know, for so many CIOs and CTOs across the industry. You know, people are really so amazed that, hey, the biggest problem that they have been facing is, you know, when I am hitting production, what is the guarantee that my application is going to run in a stable state for X amount of time, right? What is the guarantee that when I, after the production deployment, when I bring up the application, the application will work fine with the same uh, stability, right? What is the guarantee that the code that is getting deployed in the production is exactly the same version of the code that was tested in all the different test environments, right? What is the guarantee that the application configuration with which we have tested are exactly the same configuration that is getting passed onto the production environment when we are doing production deployments, right? So I can go on and on, you know, talking about so many different challenges and all of these issues, they are really, you know, um, I should say, you know, um, creating so much of disturbance. They are all showstoppers because each of these issues can has a potential to even stop your production deployment, right? Each of these issues has the potential to even elongate the production downtime or the outage window that you are talking about, right? And all these things, you know, it ultimately impacts your customer satisfaction, your customer experience, right? So 50% reduction in the uh, failures, this is an astonishing number, 22% improved quality of deployed applications. So now your application deployments are becoming much more, um, you know, predictable because you have much better control on what is getting deployed, how that is getting deployed and what are the configurations and what, what particular version of the code, you know, whether it is tested or not, whether it is the same code that is getting deployed or not. So a lot of those things, you know, now we have in our control. And because now you are having lesser, release cycles, you are able to run fast to make those releases. So in that given amount of time where you were able to make, you know, X number of releases earlier, now you are able to make Y number of releases. That means now you are delivering more features. Now you are making your software releases much more frequently. That means customers are getting more features in the same duration. So that's the advantage of it, right? So this is all about, you know, what is CI, what is CD, and again, CD is, you know, a, a distinction, you know, that we're trying to make between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. I know uh, we have a Q&A session parked at the end, so I don't even want to, uh, you know, ask uh, 
you know people to raise hand and ask me for questions now um, let's continue uh, with the flow so guys you know um, we have been you know last couple of slides we have been talking so much about ci about cd and again you know whether it's continuous delivery whether it's continuous deployments we have been talking so much about all of this but we have seen you know what are the different advantages what is the roi you know cios and ctos of the organizations are you know going gaga about the implementation and the benefits that they are getting you know with the, the implementation of devops and the implementation of ci cd right so if everything is fine if companies are getting huge ROIs, then what is the problem? If your company is already implementing CICD, if you guys are already, you know, onboarded to your DevOps processes, you have a huge spectrum of tools, you have a huge uh, spectrum of, you know, uh, uh, different applications, you know, which have onboarded to your tool set, to your DevOps tool set or your DevOps ecosystem, right? And you already have started getting benefits then where the problem is, right? I'm talking about, um, you know, enterprise level applications, uh, uh, enterprise uh, organizations, and I'm talking about the scenarios where, you know, um, we scale up our DevOps processes at an enterprise level, you know? What it means, you know, you have a huge uh, enterprise and that enterprise has good amount of applications, you know? Try to optimize, you know, um, if, if, if many of you, you know, might want to go and, you know, check my LinkedIn profile, you might have seen, you know, I was working for Dell. It's a huge enterprise ecosystem, right? One of our customer, I, I don't know whether you noticed uh, in uh, my previous slide, Salesforce is one of our customers, right? So it's it's another huge organization, you know, uh, and the kind of the, the level of implementation, the DevOps implementation they have, it's enormous. Right. And when we talk of those organizations and they are implementing DevOps at that large scale, right, the problems are also of that nature, you know, even those problems become gigantic. And the biggest problem is the more you talk about implementing CI CD in the name of pipelines and, you know, multiple stages within these pipelines and so on, you know, initially it all is good. Hey, I have created a pipeline for my application. Now I can trigger the pipeline and I can see, you know, the application flow right? The code promotion that is happening, the, uh, the artifacts are getting built, getting deployed, getting released, so, you know, everything looks so easy and so fantastic. But imagine, you know, when you start increasing these pipelines with the increased number of applications, you, you end up having so many different pipelines, you know. I can, I can quote one example. For one of our customers, um, I, I, I happen to, you know, work with them and I realized every single application, they have an average of about 900 to 1000 pipelines per application on Spinnaker tool. They are using Spinnaker. And this is huge. This is astoundingly huge because it, see, end of the day, you know, pipelines are something, you know, that will work as per what you define. But that definition part is done by the humans, right? Who are going to maintain these pipelines? Who is going to control as to, you know, what will be the uh, traversal path for these pipelines? What different stages are going to be defined? And which of these stages will perform what activity? All that definition has to be done by humans, the owners of those applications and the owners of those pipelines, right? So complexity increases when it comes to, you know, the number of pipelines that we need to maintain, we need to manage, right and the number of stages these pipelines have right now this is one uh, big problem another big problem is we have too many tools right in lieu of automating things right at times you know and again you know there is no one to blame for it right someone says hey we humans are like this you know when we when we understand the benefits of automation, we go and try to automate every damn thing that is possible, right? Every single activity that earlier we used to do manually, we want to automate it. So I can't blame humans. It's, it's basically, you know, our mindset. We want to automate, right? Our customers are too demanding. They want every single thing, you know, to be automated. And we have so many different tools for it. Whether, whether we, we, we talk about tools for, uh, you know, code compilation, 
code scans, code coverage, whether we talk of tools for your test automation, right? Uh, your binary management, your image scans, you know, or the, the so-called, you know, DevSecOps, you know, all those security tools that we're talking about, right? So you just name it, you just think of it, and, and you have those tools about it, right? So all these tools and every tool, you know, it's not just about integrating a tool and then you are done, you know, for the rest of your life. You need to maintain those tools, you need to manage those tools. Many of these tools may not be open source or they may not be free, right? So you may need to, uh, you know, um, take care of their licensing, expiry, patching, upgrades. So if it was just one tool, Jenkins, it would have been very easy, fairly straightforward and simple for me to maintain and manage the tool. But here we're talking about like, you know, 50 or 80 odd different tools. It is definitely a complex uh, activity, right? Now, having those many tools and those many pipelines, imagine, you know, one fine day you enter the office and you realize that your pipeline has a problem. The cost of debugging that issue and fixing it is huge and time consuming and error prone because there is no automated way of <laughs> detecting and, and fixing these issues in a pipeline. It has to be a manual process. Someone like you and me will, you know, log into the system, figure out, you know, which pipeline the issue is, then what, what is the issue in that pipeline? And then we try to fix it. So it's all manual process, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is the cost is the cost of fixing the issues is high. These pipelines are not intelligent, right? So these pipelines, they need human intervention to them, right? And then the biggest problem is uh, when these, when there are so many different tools, when there are so many different uh, applications, there are so many different pipelines and so many different of uh, different environments, you know, on which we, we perform all our uh, application deployments, right? So many and configurations and so on, you know? So ultimately, you know, the point I'm trying to make with this context is the data. Data is what, you know, is the, the biggest, uh, I should say, culprit here. Imagine, you know, just one simple example. We have one application. It has, if not 900 or 1000 pipelines, it has at least 10 pipelines. And we, for that particular application, there might be, you know, a bunch of microservices. Of course, you know, I'm assuming that all of us are into this cloud native uh, world and all of us are using this cloud native, uh, uh, you know, microservices based, you know, application architecture, right? So we have a bunch of microservices and every single microservice or every single component of this application has to go through at least you know a bunch of uh, test environments before it is ready and qualified to get into production every single environment say for example we have five test environments every single test environment may have a bunch of different uh, you know application configurations at least you know i can i can think of uh, uh, standardizing you know, the environment configurations, but application configurations may vary from environment to environment. So for one single application, having a bunch of services, a bunch of um, uh, test environments, a bunch of configurations, and, you know, a bunch of stages in those pipelines, and then, you know, a huge, you know, bunch, a, a very heavy bunch of tools, different tools, you know, with which your pipelines will connect to. You know, there are so many data points that we need to be caring for. And until we get to see those data points, we cannot take right decisions, right? A very simple decision could be, you know, when I was talking to you about, you know, the difference between CD, you know, continuous delivery and continuous deployment. You remember I was telling you, between release and deployment, there is a small activity, which is more like a verification activity. Right. So there you realize or you verify, you know, how the release is looking like based on some data points. And then you decide whether this, uh, you know, application is ready to get deployed into production. Right. If that verification is done manually, it becomes uh, continuous delivery. And if it is automated, then I would say, you know, continuous deployment because continuous deployment is like, you know, a rigor in which, you know, you are automating the deployments all the way till production 
right? Without any human intervention or without any manual intervention. So those data points are really very critical. Though you are trying to implement CD, whether it is continuous delivery or continuous deployment, in any form, these data points are critical for your application to reach production, right? And these data points are so critical, but we have absolutely no control on them. Trust me, we go through, you know, n numerous test cycles. Every test cycle will generate, you know, a bunch of test data, test uh, metrics. And at, at, at times, you know, it, it becomes, you know, immensely, you know, difficult uh, to, you know, track these data points, track the logs, identify what were the issues, how it got fixed and so on. This becomes a nightmare when it comes to day-to-day -day operations, right? So these are all the different problems. And that's where, you know, when, when we here at OpsMX, you know, when we were all, you know, trying to brainstorm with each other, you know, working with a lot of different customers to understand, you know, what was the problem and, you know, how we can help, uh, you know, fix those issues. And that's where, you know, we came up with this process called MAD, MAD CD implementation, right? We were all getting mad with these different problems. And that's probably, you know, the story behind, you know, uh, um, you know, we choosing this uh, word called MAD, you know, which is more of, you know, uh, measure, analyze and decide. Okay, now let's take a little, um, you know, deeper uh, look into what is this MAD. Of course, you know, these, these three appears to be, you know, three different facets of something that we are doing uh, with respect to continuous delivery. But all these three facets, they are, uh, you know, joined with each other. They work in conjunction with each other. They are not separate, right? They are not disjoint. What is measure? Measure is all about measuring every single thing that you are trying to implement in the form of your CI CD pipelines, right? If, if it was, you know, few years back, maybe, you know, five years or eight years before, probably, you know, organizations might not have been even aware of what is a pipeline. Trust me, you know, <laughs> eight years before, I, I would have, I would have, you know, uh, surprised if there were companies who were implementing, you know, CICD pipelines. Hardly very few knew about it. And a small portion of those few organizations, they were actually implementing it, right? Even the biggest corporates of the world, they didn't know what is DevOps and uh, what is, you know, these pipelines and, and, and not too far, just eight years back, right? When we started journey, you know, this, this CICD and DevOps journey, you know, um, we focused on automating every single activity that we would have done manually, you know? So the, all the focus was towards automating, automating and, and automating. That's it any single activity that you were doing manually for more than once, it should be a part of your pipeline and it should be automated. So that used to be the direction that we used to get, you know, from our top executives. Now that we are maturing in this automation thing, our focus should be on measuring. So every single activity that your pipeline is performing has to be measured. Every single activity whether it is build, whether it is, you know, uh, your deployments and, you know, whatever it be. Of course, you know, there is one another slide where, you know, I'm going to, um, you know, walk you through, you know, what would be those, uh, you know, measurement points in a little more detail. So I'll, I'll, I'll discuss in, uh, for that particular thing in detail, you know, when we go through that slide. But for now, let's just understand, measure every single point of your pipeline execution anything everything of your uh, from your pipeline you know you have to measure and keep measuring it it should not be that okay let me do that measurement only you know once in a week or once in a day or once in a month no every single pipeline run those measurement points should be captured and that data has to be stored somewhere analyze that data that you have captured, which you have stored somewhere, right? Start analyzing that data. Trust me, you know, when you start working with this data and when you start seeing trends 
getting derived from this data? You know, I am pretty confident that you don't need anyone else to sit with you or to guide you or to, you know, coach you as to, you know, what is happening with your system and what would, what should you do to make it more efficient or what you should do to fix the existing issues. You don't need any suggestions. You don't need any handholding. All that you need is those data points. And I'm telling you based on my practical experience, you know, without data points, it's fairly, you know, difficult to even understand what's happening, what's wrong, how to fix it. You have okay. this data. And when you see the trends deriving out of these data for multiple executions of the same pipeline, it becomes so pretty clear that, hey, this is where the problem is. And this is how I should be fixing it. As simple as that, right? So start analyzing the data. The fun is not, you know, in just uh, capturing the data and storing it. You need to analyze that data, right? Now, how you analyze them, whether it's manually or you hire someone, you know, whose full-time day job will be just to go through this data, right? So that's, that's something, you know, um, I don't need to get into, right? You need to analyze the data as simple as that. And then use that data for taking next steps. Next steps in the sense, how your pipeline should look like, what modifications, changes you need to make in your pipeline, what will be the pipeline progression is also that needs to be decided on these data points, right? And not just from the pipeline, not just from the pipeline execution, pipeline maintenance, but overall, you know, your CI CD system, you know, how you want to improve it, how you want to optimize it. So even these are some of the things, you know, that you will derive from the very same data points. Okay. Um, I would have stopped here for a yeah. small break. Is it okay, yeah. Shalin, if I can uh, take a pause here and uh, open the desk, uh, DAS for any questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, in fact, I have uh, one. So I, I hope uh, you will be showcasing some of these uh, data points in, uh, in a demo, uh, some of the practical ones which you have used in your real life or uh, while measuring. Uh, <clears throat> so, in, I mean, I, I, those, the point around uh, these uh, data points which you made was very pertinent when you uh, said that we need to measure it on a, a regular basis. And uh, so, it, it, I, I think the audience would definitely benefit uh, if, if uh, we can have a look at some of that data or a sample data of sorts. I hope you would yeah. be covering that in, in your Yeah, time. yeah, 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 absolutely, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm already prepared to, you know, uh, give you a very short, brief walkthrough of our product. And I'm, I'll be more than excited, you know, to share how we are trying to solve this problem uh, with our product and how our product will use, I mean, uh, how customers can use our product to solve these problems that we're talking about. I'll definitely sure. give that uh, demo. Sure. Guys, uh, do you guys have any questions? Uh, I see one question popping up. Uh, okay, so uh, this question is from Sudhin. Uh, he asked that, hi Vishal, can you explain the difference between release and deploy phase? Your explanation of CICD was very useful. See, typically release for me, you know, uh, when I, okay. When I go back to this slide, you know, here I was trying to, you know, put a particular phase called release. This release phase is like, you know, um, you know, a stopgap analysis for me. Every organization today, they have something called release management. A release management is a process where you take a stock of where you are with respect to your application, right? Um, Say for example, you know, there will be a change management team, a release management team, the release management team will start coordinating on, you know, all the different aspects of the application, right? Um, 
let me pick one example in one of the earlier organizations i was working you know there used to be release calendars so you cannot release an application as and when you want you know again i'm talking about you know few years earlier in in my career you know so those days companies were not so uh, you know formally uh, they, they were not matured you know from dev, devops perspective so um, there used to be release calendars say a particular saturday and sunday of a, uh, of a particular month or maybe two saturdays of a particular month are exclusively reserved for performing production releases and prior to that weekend there will be a bunch of so called release managers who will you know start working with all those you know 15 20 30 different applications and they start you know um, you know running with all those files you know <laughs> i still remember you know they used to go and talk to the dev manager saying hey so tell me now i have you closed all the bugs you know what is your defect ratio have you fixed all the issues you know what was your test count you know how many test cycles you have run where, where, you know so they 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 go and try to validate a bunch of all those data points and only when they verify everything they give a go ahead saying yes now you are ready to go to production and that's what is you know actual production deployment oh that was very uh, enlightening uh, vishal because i was always a, i was a bit confused between release and deploy thank you for making it clear thank you so much you are welcome sudindra yeah okay so, it, so it's a kind of a rehearsal kind of a thing right before we actually release uh, the product into the uh, actual production environment it's a kind of a rehearsal where we check we check all the data points all the criteria all the do all the stop gap analysis right we used to call a go no go meeting mm-hmm. we used to call it a go no go decision so that was a typical meeting you know prior to which release managers will spend uh, uh, enormous time you know trying to capture all the data meet with all the stakeholders you know uh, take an approval even you know from the uh, respective uh, you know executives wait you know uh, vps or svps or cios ctos right so okay. even they are involved right so okay. they will come prepared with all the data points and you know all the other engineering stakeholders will also be there and we all sit together in a meeting called go no go uh, meeting and we decide you know whether it's a go or a no go for the respective production deployments all right all right thank you thank you vishal thanks so thanks thanks videndra uh so uh, another question which is in the chat window uh, by sora i think uh, is based on these data points can pipeline heal itself in case of anomaly i'm i'm sorry come again uh, based on these data points uh, can the pipeline heal itself in case of any anomaly yeah absolutely absolutely sora um that's a fantastic point you raised and how that is going to be possible i'll show you in upcoming slides okay so i'll 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 request you to be a little patient when i'm coming on to that slide you will get the answer yourself but yeah to answer it right now in a word i would say yes it is absolutely possible and that's what we have done using our product at opsumits so um let let us do this uh, shalin you know uh, even if there are any other questions let's park them for the end and let me proceed you know otherwise we'll be running short of the time sure, sure. so right. all this time you know uh, if you remember um, friends you know i have been talking and stressing so much on data right of course you know um, you might you might <laughs> you might uh, get amused that this session is all about you know cd whether it's continuous delivery continuous deployment continuous integration devops right but i am talking so much about data my focus is completely you know on data because that is exactly what i want to measure right and that is exactly what we are talking about measure analyze and then use that analysis to decide what you want to do right so now let's focus on what should we measure okay i am sure many of you might be wondering you know hey this guy might be uh, has so much you know he has been stressing so much about measuring but he didn't tell me you know what all can be measured so let's look at that now 
take a glance at this typical CD pipeline, and I'm pretty sure you would be able to correlate this pipeline with the pipelines that you have in your organization. I'm pretty sure, you know, it looks much similar to what you have been doing in your respective organizations, right? You are having some revision control tool, source code control tool, you know, you are committing your code there, your build system picks up the code, performs the build, then, you know, you have your code analysis, code scans, unit testing, and all of those different activities. Then you perform your test. Now I can break this test into, you know, three or five or 10 different, you know, test cycles based on, you know, five or 10 different test environments, whatever it be, right? And then here is my release, you know, so-called manual approval, go, no, go or whatever, you know, and then I have a production deployment there. Okay. Very, you know, normal cycle feels so homely as if, you know, this is what exactly I have been doing in my respective applications in my organizations. So guys, do I need to even tell you what, what you should you measure? Because every single stage of your pipeline, every single phase, you capture so much of data, right? Say for example, you know, in the build section, you can definitely capture, you know, what are your builds? What time it took, right? How many successful builds? How many build failures? In your code scans, you know, you know, what are the, uh, you know, issues you are getting. Today, almost every one of us know, you know, uh, we have been using Sonar, Sonar Cube, right? For all our code scans and, uh, you know, and, and we, we, we know what kind of beautiful data points we generate out of Sonar, right? Likewise, your uh, test, how many test executions, I mean, test cycles were done, you know, how many uh, test cycles passed, number of test cases failed, what is your test automation score, right? So there are so many different things that you can keep, uh, uh, you know, uh, capturing. Now, this is all from the application perspective, right? There are so many other things that you can even, um, you know, um, think of from the environment perspective, from the infrastructure perspective. Right? So these days, you know, uh, we, we talk about uh, on-demand test environments or on-demand environments in general, right? So with this containerization, you know, it so happens that you go and, you know, on, on your system, you just click off a button and you get a containerized, you know, test environment and which is ready for deployment. You can immediately go and, you know, perform your application deployment on top of it. And maybe, you know, another click of a button, you get another environment, which becomes your production and you go and, you know, perform your code deployment and right. And, and that becomes your production environment, right? So all your image scans, the time it takes to generate the environment, even, you know, your pre-environment and post-environment creation validations. So all of that, you know, could be a potential data point. And that's what I was trying to list here, you know, build data your test data, your regression and performance uh, data, right? Code analysis, code scans, code security data. Deployment, very interesting, you know? How many times you are performing the deployments, right? Uh, how many times your deployment is successful? It is passed, failed. If it is failed, then what are the issues, right? If for a few subsequent runs, you know, if you are getting similar issues, then that is something, you know, that needs to be, you know, uh, accounted for. That will definitely raise, uh, you know, uh, uh, eyebrows for, uh, you know, as to, you know, why these issues are repeating again and again, right? So that is something you might want to, you know, definitely look out for. Likewise, you know, this is what is our release frequency, release stability, how stable our releases are, how frequently we are making releases, you know? So how many applications are getting into that particular release? How many of them are getting rollback, right? So a lot of those things. Now, here comes our tools and integrations data points. How many tools we have, right? Um, what are these different data points, right? Are you using Jira? Are you using Jira? Uh, uh, sorry, are you integrating Jira with your pipeline to generate test de I mean, defects in Jira if there are, uh, you know, uh, uh, test cases that are getting filled, 
for every single test case which is getting failed have you integrated jira for raising a defect no probably not or probably yes right but having all these different tools even these tools are capable of getting all those data right and same thing you know number of validations environment release environment readiness you know pre environment validation post environment validation right so a lot of those things so uh, i i remember you know in one of my previous companies uh, we used to implement something called bvt evt and ivt right bvt is nothing but your build verification test cases ivt is infrastructure verification test cases so what it means when you are preparing an environment i am talking about the environment right so whether your environment is ready whether your environment is stable and whether that environment is validated that it is ready for deployment right so that is my ivt infrastructure verification test sorry evts environment verification test right and then the last one is ivts which is installation verification test so after i perform the deployment on that environment then i run another validation you know of course everything is automated so we used to run another level of validation which was installation verification okay now we completed what we want to measure right now analysis is something you know i don't think i need to teach anyone that how you want to analyze your data it's all up to you whether you want to manually analyze or you want to write you know some kind of uh, ai or ml based uh, you know machine learning programs uh, you know to analyze this data and generate you know some kind of trends out of this data right but what would you use these data points for is something you know most important and guys let's focus on this next slide which is the most important point of this uh, entire discussion the outcome of it right gates i'm talking about the gates here right if i if if someone ask me right what is a pipeline in a very simple layman term you know i would explain pipeline is nothing but a sequential step uh, you know a sequential way of executing different steps of your code promotion right a sequence in which you order all your different stages okay so you have different stages say in the earlier you know your uh, build is one stage code scans is another stage you know test environment is another stage release is another stage right so you have different stages and every stage may have you know some steps right now a gate for me here is nothing but a custom stage in your pipeline that helps you manage the progression of your pipeline what it means if imagine do you see these you know traffic signals here 1 2 3 4 this for me is a gate this is exactly like a traffic signal and every one of us are very familiar with it you started from your house all the way you went to that signal you had to stop at that signal someone else will decide whether the traffic cop or the signal or if it's automated you know every 10 seconds 20 seconds you will get an opportunity to go away i mean go uh, uh, you know go beyond so that signal will decide whether you will stay there for some more time or whether you will proceed with your journey right so that is exactly what i'm trying to depict here a custom stage in your pipeline that helps you manage the progression of your pipeline whether your pipeline will stop or whether it will pro proceed to the next stages but how will this stage help you because this stage is a custom stage which will validate some criteria based on the data that you have captured and analyzed as simple as that right a very simple example build automated build right now i can write a small logic here you know i can create a small stage between this build and code scans and i can write a small logic which says if my build is failed 
then pipeline execution should stop there. But if my build is passed, then it can go to the next stage, right? Or I can make it a little more smarter saying, if there are zero errors, only then proceed. If there are eight or 10 warnings, then you stop, right? So I can come up with any such permutation and combination of my logic and that logic becomes a gate and that gate is the one which is actually, you know, controlling the progression of your pipeline ahead, right? Typically, you know, I would say we have three different kinds of gates that we have defined. One is verification gate, a, a gate which is typically used to verify the data. You already have captured the data. It is lying there somewhere. All that you need is to go and verify the data. And if your data is meeting some particular criteria, you let the pipeline proceed or else you let the pipeline stop. <laughs> Validation gate is more or less like, you know, your environment verification, right? I was testing, I was talking about EVTs and IVTs, right? So this could be one very simple example of your validation gate, right? Another very excellent example of a validation gate is a policy gate. What is a policy here? Say for example, see when you are, when you are uh, developing these high-end systems, which see you are, you are being so aggressive, right? You are being so ambitious. You want to develop a system which can enable you to release, um, enable production releases multiple times in a day, right? So you need to automate every single thing, right? Now imagine you have a policy from 25th December till 1st Jan. I don't want to perform any production deployments because that's a blackout window for me. Everyone in the globe might be, you know, uh, enjoying their Christmas and New Year vacation, right? That's a policy. You have an organization policy that no production deployment should happen between 25th December to 1st Jan. You want to implement that policy in your pipelines. That means even though verification gate passes. What will verification gate do? It will just validate the data. All the data is fine, looking great, no defects, zero issues, right? But even then, the next gate will be policy gate and it has the ability to still stop the pipeline because policy gate tries to you know, ensure whether you are allowed to go in production on this particular day and time. And if your pipeline is getting executed between 25th December to 1st Jan, then your pipeline will halt. It will not proceed. Another thing is, you know, approval gate. You know, typically, you know, I would say every single stakeholder, right, who is responsible to decide whether we are good for deployment, for production deployment or not, will use this kind of gate. A typical go-no-go -no -go discussion that we're talking about Auto, that can be automated using this approval gate, right? So these are the types of gates that, you know, we, we try to come up with and our product supports. This is all about, you know, mad CD. It might have sounded a bit dry because we have been talking. So without wasting any more time, let me quickly walk you through our product. The name of my product is OES, Opsemex Enterprise Spinnaker. Right now, our product is very heavily dependent on Spinnaker as a CD tool, but we are very aggressively working towards making this product, you know, a generic product that can work with any other CD tool. Say for example, today, if you're not using Spinnaker, probably, you know, you may not be able to use this tool immediately. But if you are using Jenkins, I mean, the, what, what we are working towards is, you know, tomorrow, if we, uh, if you are working with Jenkins, even then you can use our product. If you are working with any other CD tool, even then you can use our product, right? So, this is the application dashboard. Let me quickly, uh, okay, let me do this. 
I'll show you the beauty of this product. We, we can think of these dashboards and all little later, right? Let me first show you the beauty of this product. This product has the capability of syncing all your applications from Spinnaker, right? So all your applications or pipelines that you have defined in Spinnaker as a CD tool, and tomorrow, you know, we are actually, as we, uh, while we are talking, you know, there is, our team is working on integrating this tool with Jenkins, right? And other uh, CD tools as well. So pretty soon, you know, you will hear back from us that our product is now well integrated with other CD tools. But for now, you know, if you are using Spinnaker, you are defining custom applications. Every application may have a bunch of pipelines. And if you are using Spinnaker as a CD tool, you can sync all your applications. That means all your bunch of applications from Spinnaker, you can bring it here. And now you can manage those applications and pipelines from OES. You don't even need to go to Spinnaker, right? Now, I just pick one particular application, say OpsMX demo, and there you see. I see all the different pipelines. This particular application had Dev pipeline, QA pipeline, and prod pipeline. Right? And that pipeline is also shown here. Right? I don't know how do I hide this. Uh, okay. There you go. So the pipeline is also shown here, the dev pipeline view. I'm getting that view from Spinnaker and I'm showing that view. Right? Likewise, QA pipeline is also shown. Right? Prod pipeline is also shown. The beauty of this is, imagine you want to get to the next level of maturity. What I mean, the moment you commit a code check-in, you don't want to you know, wait. You, know, you don't want to wait for individual pipelines to execute. You want all these three pipelines to run together. In the sense, you know, it, uh, the moment you commit a code, it should run, you know, the dev builds, you know, for uh, dev integration testing, then it should uh, run the QA pipelines, perform the tests, and, you know, then it should run production pipeline, all in a sequence. We have come up with pipeline stitching. What it means, I can stitch pipelines together. I can bundle these pipelines together. Earlier, you know, if you remember, we were talking about stages. A pipeline is a mix of, is a, it is a bunch of different stages that we, you know, uh, club together. Now I have come up with the next view, which talks about multiple pipelines getting clubbed together. And this is exactly what it is. This is the dev, dev pipeline, QA pipeline, production pipeline. I have clubbed all of them together and I can trigger that pipeline, right? The next thing I wanted to show you, the, Say for example, I'm talking about production pipeline, right? So this is my production pipeline view. These are the different types of gates that I can add. So if you see here, you know, there is an add new gate feature. The moment I click on this add new gate, I get, you know, what are the different gates available? Verification gate, approval gate, policy gate. Of course, you know, uh, recently we came up with test verification and this particular feature is still like, you know, we are testing it out. So, um, you know, don't count that, but yeah, approval, verification, and policy. These are the three main gates that we are talking about. So you can just add any such kind of gate. Say I want to add a policy gate. Enforce blackout window. So this enforce blackout window, see, these are the typical policies as I was telling. What is a blackout period? 25th December to 1st January is your blackout period. Or no deployment on weekends is another policy you want to uh, you know, uh, enforce or enforce verification checks, make it mandatory, right? So a lot of those policies you can define. So pick one of these policies and just save. That's it. Vishal, keep... uh, if there is one question, uh, if you want to take it. Uh, Shalin, give me just a few seconds more. Okay. I will try to wrap it up and then, you know, we'll, we'll dedicatedly focus on Q&A. Okay, sure. Okay. So the beauty of this product, I have added one policy gate. I save it. I click another add service. That's it. I keep on adding services. 
and i can keep on adding gates to these services right or to, to these pipelines right approval verification and so on and you get the same pipeline view of all these applications we have a bunch of tools with which you know you can integrate with say for example i was talking about tools and integrations right i was telling you we have a bunch of tools we have gate we have jira we have uh, you know a data dog we have artifactory we have prometheus we have grafana and we want to use the data that is available in all of these tools right so how do we capture that we have to integrate all this data uh, data points and we have to create a central repository for this data and that's what we are trying to do with these integrations when i try to add a new integration you know you see a bunch of all the different integrations that we have elastic stack driver splunk prometheus new relic data dog app dynamics jenkins docker hub bitbucket you name the tool if uh, of course you know there will be a bunch of other tools also that we are planning to add so you name the tool you will have it here integrated right and once you have all of these things then while your pipelines are getting executed you can see all those dashboards right say for example we are talking about this particular application called opsmx demo this is the app that we have seen right that app has all these details you know it has one service which one pipeline it has gone through 13 deployments it has zero pending approval zero policy violations and zero test failures you click on all these details you will get a bunch of all these details for the dev for the qa for the prod you know whether there was any policy yes we had a policy but that policy got passed yes let me see what was that policy and it will give me all the details here right so i actually can you know keep talking for next one hour one and half hour about this product and i can get into even more details and the depth of all the different features about this product but again you know um looking at the time i understand you know all of us have taken time you know to you know um, out of your busy schedule and today being still a working day you know so um, you know let's let's not you know um, deviate from the core topic so just wanted to give you a look and feel of you know all these different gates that we are talking about so um, this is about it um, friends i hope this session was useful um, if you have any follow up questions feel free to reach out to me shalin uh you know will be more than happy to help you now with this i'll i'll leave the floor open for q and a thanks thanks vishal so uh right now i i have one question uh asked by mishad uh he asked is the tool compatible with mainframe technologies and related platforms oh yes tool you mean yep no that's what i think he means right now no okay see um look at it clear. from the different angle you know um today everyone in the world is moving towards cloud containerization right i would i would first try to ensure you know my tool is supportive of all these different cloud technologies probably you know i would then think of integrating it and making it compatible with mainframes answer no for now we don't have that the integration support sure uh the other question is uh, is is the product oes am intelligence system means uh, can it analyze logs and uh, decide to fail a pipeline in case of any test run uh, issues or when can it encounters any test run issues absolutely this is a wonderful question we have a continuous verification feature it can do trend analysis what it means we this tool has more than 1000 such intelligent programs running in the background they are all ai and ml based programs they will capture your data all the data that we are trying to feed in they will start analyzing this data they will uh, you know analyze all your logs and other metrics and they will come up with some intelligent you know uh, output and again you know you can set the thresholds right say for example for some particular application you know uh, you can set saying you know uh, my score is maybe you know 
it is a fail here why because the very the score for this is like 34 and i have set it as fail for some other application it might be 70 and the application is passed now this fail and pass score is something you know that you can custom define for your application but the point i am trying to highlight it will analyze all the different logs it can analyze all the different data points that you are feeding in and it can do all these kinds of verification and you know while 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 we are feeding these data points there are more than 1000 such ml programs ai based programs you know running and analyzing these logs this is definitely you know one of the most intelligent uh, tools uh, that we have developed so sure. uh, thanks vishal uh, the another question we we have couple of questions from our uh, question number 1 is is there any uh, data regarding the team size at which cd tool starts providing an roi uh team size not yeah. not really i think um, i don't think there is any direct or straightforward correlation between the roi of ci cd and the team size right um what what i would rather think of is twist it in a different way okay based on my experience <laughs> um what is the reduction in my you know a uh, manual effort based on your uh, you know devops implementation that is something which it sounds a little more meaningful probably this is what we used to do earlier right uh, we used to have a target from our top management saying hey i want to reduce my dev teams by you know uh, 8% you know every year so year on year 8% reduction in the dev team size why because i am investing in your team vishal your yours is the devops team you are automating a bunch of stuff so obviously you know when you start automating the development team size should keep reducing they should not be doing that stuff manually right so that used to be a target and that used to be even a, a metric for measuring our performance you know as to whether we are good in you know automating everything that we need uh the second question is large teams will always provide roi but what is the minimum team size i think it's related to the oh, same question but uh, just to be clear but what is the minimum team size in which one can so roi to senior management well uh, let me tell you this you know um one of the mistakes you know that we try to make um is you know when we try to start measuring um roi from team size or headcount perspective you know roi in my opinion should always be measured in you know what are the things that you are doing manually versus automated how this you know a uh, uh, development or how this automation or devops or ci cd is helping you in reducing the number of bugs defects in reducing the time you reach production right in automating stuff in reducing the manual errors right so look on those metrics and those metrics will be a better uh, you know uh, roi calculators you know than headcount and team size and so on sure so i don't see any more question and we are i think just two minutes uh, away uh, um closing this session so i think it's uh, we are good to start on the quiz uh, thanks vishal uh, for the wonderful session today and guys if you have any questions uh, do feel free to reach out to us whether on the meetup platform or uh, you can write us write to us at info@opsomics.com and uh, vishal if you have uh, provided your details on the um, slide maybe you can just put it you know, for a second uh, for people to uh, uh, get a hold of it otherwise it's fine i mean that's that's a meetup uh, platform is the best uh, to connect uh so let me just uh, then share I, i did share the uh, link Uh, of the uh, of the quiz uh, just a second let me share it once again
so we would be good to start on the quiz i think this this is the most exciting part of uh, our sessions uh, most of people look for look forward to the quiz and i hope you guys have been listening intently uh, to vishal's session today uh, the quiz would be uh, regarding his session itself so i am i am going to kick off the quiz uh, i see uh, most many people have joined the session uh, just going to wait for five more seconds for others to join so yeah i'm going to uh, quick we start the quiz so very first question is finance delivery initiative as a factor is very hard to measure true or false okay okay now moving on to the next question it was obviously uh, false uh measurement in uh, continuous delivery means only one thing understanding the lead time or software delivery is it yes or no hurry up guys five more seconds to go okay i see the answers coming in and the results would be on your screen right now moving on to the next question is a select the devops metrics which are essential to measure the effectiveness of continuous delivery project uh, i think if you were listening to vishal uh, this would be very easy to answer okay yeah the polling is closed correct answer on the screen right now and one of the main reasons why ci cd process is broken today is and to analyze data and perform manual approvals or manual verification integration of a cd tool with other ci cd systems cause to debug fix failures or all of the above okay i think we have passed four questions so we can have a look at the leaderboard just to keep things slightly exciting uh, so uh, arnav is leading uh, meda and saurabh gupta are maintaining the three the top three positions uh, moving on to the uh, next question now you guys still have the chance to go for the leaderboard Okay. I see. Okay. Which of the following tool is capable of measuring, analyzing, and deciding how to progress the delivery pipeline? This should be pretty easy. Okay, tool. The correct answer on the screen. Moving on to the penultimate question: What is the difference between continuous delivery deployment and delivery? So you've got slightly more time to read through your options. Ten seconds remaining, guys. Uh, yeah, three, two, one. Okay. And I see correct answers. It's on the board. Okay. Going on to the next question. 
how does uh, Optimex Enterprise for systemic health in measuring, analyzing, and deciding to progress your company's delivery pipeline? Yeah, this should also be pretty easy. So yes, with this, uh, I think we can uh, conclude the quiz. The correct answer on your screen right now. And I'm going to show the leaderboard uh, in one second. So yeah, I think Arnab, uh, Saurabh, and Deepak again on the leaderboard. Uh, congratulations, guys. I think uh, a couple of you guys were also part of, uh, were on the leaderboard for the last uh, quiz as well. Uh, so congratulations once again, and thanks for participating again, and thanks for everyone else as well who has joined. Uh, so you guys would be receiving Amazon uh, coupon vouchers. Uh, just feel free to reach out uh, to us. We do have your email IDs. Uh, so you would be receiving your uh, vouchers on your email IDs. But in, in case uh, there is any issues, just reach out to us. Reach out to me uh, on the Meetup platform uh, or, uh, or over the email IDs. So thanks with this. I think we can conclude the session uh, for today. And uh, thank you, Vishal, once again uh, for joining us today and uh, providing uh, taking this uh, taking out time from your busy schedule uh, for this great great session. We look forward for you to joining uh, joining us more. Sure. Uh, thanks, My everyone. Pleasure. Thanks, Vishal. I would like to thank all the participants and attendees uh, for taking time and attending this uh, you know, session. So uh, thanks once again, everyone. Stay safe, um, be safe, you know, and uh, have a good weekend. Thanks. Have a happy weekend, guys.